Ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, really my pleasure to co-chair with uh, prof uh, Professor Javi uh, of uh, this section. I don't think I, I need to introduce a lot for okay, Professor Ho Ming Chi. I want to save, uh, first save time for his uh, speech. It is my great pleasure to introduce our next, uh, the keynote speaker, uh, Min Chi Hang, who has been a friend and mentor at Anderson. Uh, he's the chair of Department of Molecular and Cell Biology at MD Anderson and has now a big job, really the president of China Medical University in uh, Taichung in Taiwan. So I'm going to go back into a little bit in his bio. And first of all, I research what does Minchi mean? And Minchi actually means bright, strange, and outstanding. And you know, <laughs> as a scientist, you know, strange comes naturally. And his wife, King Lan, means golden orchid. So, you know, I, I read through some of his interviews why he chose biochemistry. He chose it because it gave him a window into the complexity of the universe. This, these are his words. And then he came here in the 70s. He experienced a culture shock where there were few Asian students at Brandeis. And he thought all Americans were Jewish at that time. <laughs> and and he, he realized that it's important for international students to understand that they're representatives of their countries of origin and can influence the Americans' perceptions of Asians from their homeland. You know, a lot of Asians and immigrants, like myself, to US, kind of view us as representatives, and we, we need to be looked at in a good light. And he was one of them. Now, one of the papers that I researched in his past was this interesting article from Science, which reads as Asian scientists and the glass ceiling. So in this article, he mentions that a lot of scientists, all the, all the labs in US, have many Asian postdocs but very few of them actually make it to leadership where they actually change science or have a meaningful uh, position in the scientific world. So he wrote this article that the Asians need to break the glass ceiling. And I'm proud to say that Minchi has broken the glass ceiling. He, was, he, he graduated from right here in Taiwan, went to Brandeis, then went to MIT. He joined MD Anderson as a professor, assistant professor in 1986 rapidly became the professor, the chief of molecular and cell biology, and he has several distinguished professorships, breast cancer biology, uh, distinguished chair of molecular and cell oncology, vice president of research, director of Center for Biological Pathways, and out of his awards, the one that I selected was one for teaching, that is Regents Award for Outstanding Teaching. So he has, you know, five, close to 600 publications, which means that through his career, he's probably written three papers every month. And his special interest is signaling pathways in cancer biologies, particularly in non-traditional signaling of EGFR, uh, non-canonical pathways, which may explain why some EGFR inhibitors do not work, crosstalk that, pre that predicts resistance to therapies, signaling of cancer stem cells, resistance mechanism to immunotherapy. And these various topics have led him to various R01s. These are, it, he's been really a leader in this field. He has been a PI for a PO1, which is really a very important award in America, growth factor signaling. He has several R01s. He has a U01, a Susan G. Komen Foundation grant. I've been privileged to uh, collaborate with him in the pancreatic spore, uh, breast cancer, a T32 craning grant. He also is a director of the functional genomics score at MD Anderson. So my experience with him was with this article where he generated an expression vector called C-Visa, which, uh, which really eradicated pancreatic tumor. It was a gene therapy. We were amazed in all the pancreatic models. So he, uh, he and I collaborated. My job was to translate this work in the clinic uh, with my boss, then Jim Abruzzi. So I was very excited. We got our uh, NIH funding. It was four hour, years of work. And then we generated this vector and we put it in the liposome, and it just sank in the saline. So it was this formulation fail after four years. And then I went to Minchi. I said, Minchi, I'm crushed with this four years of labor. And he said, my friend, not to worry. We have many exciting things to do, and the science, <laughs> science cannot wait. So he just moved on. And this is really, so both he and I are now adoptive Texans. So this is like a cowboy falling from the horse. And I found this quote from Mandela, which really describes his resilience and his key to success, that our greatest glory is not in ever falling, but in rising every time we fall. So Minchi, there's a lot of good things said about you, but the most important thing I have to say is, this is what you look like as a youth. <laughs> <laughs> so Minchi is a great fan of Elvis Presley, 
And although I'm looking forward to his talk, maybe he can sing for us sometime. <laughs> so please welcome my friend and mentor, Mishi. Wow. Uh, Milena, I didn't uh, realize that you actually uh, introduced me so well. Maybe I should borrow a slide from you. In the future to myself. <laughs> anyway, so I know I have a 30 minutes time. I, in particular for this uh, conference, I had to first thank the meeting organizer for inviting me here. Because I was the, I served in MD Anderson for more than 30 years. I just retired two weeks ago. But then I assumed the job in Taichung, China Medical University as a president, so I just started my new job. So this is the first time where, as a China Medical University president to, uh, to give a talk. In, uh, in Taiwan. And I certainly do not know this disease. And I know that's why I was selected to be the keynote, because I don't know the disease. But I'm willing to share with you what we have been doing uh, to develop a lot of normal therapy on other cancer which are also similar to this disease, the uh, uh, cholangeal carcinoma, that is very difficult to treat. So with that in mind, so, uh, let me see. Oh. This disease, most of you, or virtually every one of you, know much better than me. I, I'm not familiar with this disease. I know this is a rare disease, difficult to treat, and it's remind me each of receptor mutation in non small cell lung, uh, lung cancer. There are, for example, that although this disease is so difficult to treat, but recently, LOXO 101 that being approved to treat the NTRAC. And NTRAC is a receptor tyrosine kinase being rearranged in multiple cancer types, including cholangeal uh, uh, carcinoma, except that it's only a very small portion. 4% of them are involved in this disease. And then I know in the clinical trial, this particular LOXO 101, which is being approved by FDA, has now been developed resistant. And then LOXO 195 just came out, and I heard that it is in the trial. It's not published yet. It is also resistant. And so this remind me one of the disease which have been working for a while, that is non-small cell lung cancer, the EJ receptor tyrosine kinase. In a way, it's a tar another tyrosine kinase inhibitor. And then, as you probably all know, that in the last 22 decades or so, this EJ receptor tyrosine kinase inhibitor that First generation, develop resistance. Second generation, develop resistance. Third generation, also develop resistance. And the patient are waiting for fourth generation. And I foresee uh, cholangeal uh, carcinoma is going to go, go to similar situation. But what we need to learn from other disease is what other disease has happened, we should not go to the wrong way. Let's try to do the shortcut to see whether in the future we can develop more effective therapy uh, uh, more quickly and without go to those, uh, those uh, 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 bad experience. So resistant, resistant in uh, uh, NTRAC is already known, very similar to EGF with subtyrosine kinase inhibitor. So I'm going to spend just two slides, share with you that what we have recently uh, 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 developed that likely we can uh, deal with this resistance of non-small cell lung cancer uh, TKI. And then after that, I'm going to focus on the immunocheckpoint therapy that which has been uh, been applied with all different kind of disease. I'm hoping all the uh, all these uh, novel therapy which I described today could in the uh, near future could apply to the uh, 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 this particular uh, rare disease. And I should have to say that this morning, most of the symposium I go, I know most of people, but this morning from the uh, hotel that took this uh, small bus come here. I real, I found out everybody know each other, and you guys see each other, you guys talk, and you guys hug, and I'm the only one who doesn't know anybody. <laughs> so hopefully after today, next time when I come to this uh, cholangeal carcinoma meeting, please give me a hug. <laughs> I committed to move the disease. I'm a molecular cell biologist. I, as long as molecule is involved, I move the disease. I work on breast cancer, lung cancer, colon cancer, and so on. So anyway, so with that in mind, just remember that. Give me a hug next time. <laughs> I will work on this disease. So we already developed a resistant line for the NTRAC. But just quickly share with you that is what we discovered 
what we learn from the non-small cell lung cancer. This particular disease is very similar to our cholangeal carcinoma. The non-small cell lung cancer, Caucasian, only 14% have mutation, each of receptor mutation. In Asia, China, Taiwan has more than 50%. Uh, so very similar to this, uh, this particular disease we are discussing today. So as you probably know, those uh, non-small cell lung cancer, when they have an easier receptor mutation, luckily that we have first generation of TKI, Jafetinib, for example, and then you can treat it, but then eventually develop resistance. So to make a long story short, in this article, just published a couple of months, a few months ago, that was done by a super postdoc fellow, B.C. Lee, who will join uh, China Medical University in Taichung soon, and then uh, Fang Yue Pu Yishi, that uh, he was actually a visiting fellow from Taiwan, the Chunko Memory Hospital in MD Anderson. So this is a, a, a group effort from both of them and of course a whole bunch of people in my laboratory. And we come out with this uh, uh, very interesting outcome that is following. For EGR receptor, uh, uh, EGR receptor activation mutation, when the first generation, second generation drug were treated, there are a lot of resistance mechanisms, and about 30 to 40 percent of them has also bypass resistance mechanism, and those resistance mechanisms is following. Green color stand for easier receptor mutation. The red color or purple color stand for other receptor tyrosine kinase. What we discover is when this resistance develops in the same solid tumor, there are multiple tumor cells associated with a different kind of activation mechanism. For example, some may form heterodimer between EGR receptor and EXO, another tyrosine kinase. The other cell may associate with EGR receptor to HER2, and the other could be EGR receptor with the CMET tyrosine kinase. So in a solid tumor, when you treat a patient with treated TKI, they are heterogeneous. And that's why in the clinical trial, in the model system, when you combine easier receptor tyrosine kinase inhibitor and another tyrosine kinase inhibitor such as HER2 or CMAT in clinical trial fail. In the model system work in the animal, but clinical trial always fail. However, in this article, what we discover, this mechanism, that is, all these different kinds of receptor tyrosine kinase heterodimer, they all have a common note, and this common note is a PKC delta. So regardless of you are easier receptor HER2, easier receptor XO, easier receptor CMAT, they all go through PKC delta. So in such a way, now if it's a PKC delta inhibitor plus easier receptor inhibitor, then you kill all the tumor cells. So it was reported a few months ago, and we are working with a company who developed this drug and moved in clinical trial. I certainly like to see that this type of approach can be applied to n track in our, our cholangeal carcinoma, uh, carcinoma. So as you know that the uh, Nobel Prize just uh, last year, or just a few months ago, just gave to these two person, uh, Jim Allison in, sorry, in MD Anderson, and then of the, uh, uh, Hongzhou in Japan. So what I'd like to share with you that our recent approach, because they develop immuno checkpoint therapy, and so I think I want to skip this slide. I, I assume everybody know how the general principle of anti-PD-1 works, so I'm going to uh, skip this slide. Now. We moved into immunocheckpoint therapy just three years ago. First publication in our lab on this article was done by two super postdoc fellows. Lim is now is a faculty in Purdue University. Lee is coming to China Medical University in Taichung in a few months. What we discover is following PDL1, which is a receptor molecule expressed by tumor cell to prevent it from killing by T cell. They actually has a four N-linked glycosylation site we determine the glycosylation. And this glycosylation is a very important function. However, it was totally neglected before our study. But now people are moving to the glycosylation. It's important for interaction between PT1 and PT01 and important for its half life. So I just want to keep in mind. Now, I'm going to just uh, kind of move into the, what is the heart area in immuno checkpoint. This one is a multiple center trial melanoma. And using anti-PD-1 and anti-PD-01 therapy. And in the immuno checkpoint therapy field, this particular uh, uh, study is still ongoing. It's consider considered to be the gold standard of therapeutic outcome from the clinical trial. For example, here melanoma. This is a disease originated before the immunocheckpoint developed 
very difficult uh, 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 disease to cure, so they, most of them die. But if you use anti-CDLF4 developed by Jim Allison, almost 10% is five years, and experiment still continue five years of our rate. And if you use an uh, uh, anti-PD-1 drug, so it's almost 40% five years, and experiment, this uh, clinical trial is still ongoing. But if you combine them together, it's almost 50%. 50 Although if we look at the curve, it's a little bit, when I, when I show this slide to my students, they say, well, they talk, oh, this is only a little bit different. I say, hey, wait a minute. What do you mean by only a few difference? Every one of these one, one spot is one person's life. So if you can move this curve, the blue one to the yellow one, that's already very significant. That's a lot of people's life. It's not animal's life. It's different. So I'm working on that. People in my lab working on animal. But with that in mind, that's very encouraging. Those disease which no cure, we now a new development of the drug, anti-PT1, anti-CTL4. Patients survive for five years, 50%. Impressive. But why we get together here? Because we all like to dream all the disease, hopefully we can move to, that's our dream, 100%. Does not say that tomorrow we're gonna reach it. But as long as, for example, if Trump and Xi Dada over in China don't fight, <laughs> and they put more money into the research, we probably can shorten the time to cure the cancer. And so, I, I, so, so this is our goal, but in reality, as I mentioned, in Asia we shut the case, and all the solid tumor case, including uh, 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 the disease we discussed today, that they all have a hit, t t uh, tumor heterogeneity. We all have to deal with that. And one way, not the only way, to overcome the uh, tumor heterogeneity, of course, it's effective combination therapy as I show here. One drug, another drug, combine them, it'll be better, but we are hoping to make it even better. And the other one, I will come back to say the bystander effect. The reason I say bystander effect is this type of treatment, you are dealing with a cancer cell express PDL1, but not all solid tumor, tumor cell express PDL1. If you don't express PDL1, it's not going to work. So you need to do bystander effect. So, so in the coming following slide will be our lab effort try to develop mechanism driven combination therapy. And I will not go to any experiment detail, but I'll just describe the concept with you. In this particular article, just last year, and it was done by, by Shupo, those postdoc fellow from, from uh, Seoul, Korea, and the other postdoc fellow uh, Yang, who actually graduated from uh, Yangmin University uh, in Taiwan, but he's also joined to China Medical University in Taichung now. So what we found is following. Metformin, this is a common drug. For diabetes, we all know that. Metformin associated anti-cancer activity in breast cancer clinical trial fail. It's known. But what's not known is we discovered by both of them, metformin activate an enzyme called a, M, P, K, and we know the detailed mechanism that this report, uh, report in, the, uh, in this paper. Then when A, M, P, K was activated, we unexpectedly discover A, M, P, K can phosphorylate PTO1 and therefore downregulate PTO1. In that situation, metformin, which is a well-known diabetes drug, but now when you treat with a cancer patient, the tumor cell PDL1 will be downregulated. Okay? Correct? So in the last slide I share with you the combination therapy of anti PD1 and anti CDL4. And that's a so-called gold standard of the uh, clinical outcome. But if this metformin as common drug already downregulated PDL1, which in a way functionally mimic anti PD1. So if we use uh, metformin, combined with the anti-CTLA4, which I just showed you in the melanoma trial. So what happened? This is the animal model. I pick up another disease, again, seminal uh, 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 cholangial carcinoma, it's a difficult cure disease, triple negative breast cancer. And we know triple negative breast cancer, 50% of them respond to chemo, the other 50% do not respond, there's no effective drug. And here, triple negative animal model. You don't treat them, the green line, they all die. It's expected. You treat with the metformin, they die to this red line. Uh, survive a little better. Very, the result very similar to clinical trial, it doesn't work. 
but now you the anti CTLA4, one of the immuno checkpoints. The blue line, 10% uh, survived almost one year. And actually, this uh, we last year one year. Tumor free, not bad, 10%. But now, if you take this anti ctl 4 and this metformin, which doesn't work together, you move to this purple line. My friend, 50% one year survival rate for triple negative. You cannot complain about it. If in the audience, if you have a physician who your patient is triple negative and you don't have an option, you could easily try metformin. You can prescribe it, anti ctl 4 FDA approved drug, and if this animal model convert to human, that's 50% of survival rate. We, in MD, uh, when I say we in MD Anderson, we try to do this thing, a uh, clinical trial in press medical oncology, although I just left MD, oh, by the way, I left MD Anderson, but I still run lab in MD Anderson. I spent one week per month over there, and three uh, per month in Taiwan. So we're hoping that uh, uh, this type of approach could be applied to triple negative breast cancer and, right, colentio carcinoma, okay? <laughs> Now, how about the other disease? The same type of approach, this is colon cancer model. CT26, many of you are probably familiar with. They die. Anti-CTL4, 10%. Oh, no, I'm sorry, this is, anti, uh, this is a metformin, 10%, almost one year. Anti-CTL4, when you combine them, my friend, it's 70%. It's not 100%, but 70%, very significant. In the disease, no cure. Of course, this is not human, this is animal. But that's what we did in the lab. So we developed all these mechanism driven therapy, so hopefully it can apply to all the all different disease. And certainly, that's why I, I, I was very excited that today I come here, I share this with you, and I also like to learn the disease for colangial carcinoma. And next one, liver cancer, which is, you know, just mentioned, which is the brother of the colangial carcinoma. Liver cancer, anti pd one just last year approved, very nice, but respond rate 20%. However, we all know liver cancer is no cure. 20% respond rate better than nothing. We are very happy with that. But can we develop some sort of mechanism-driven combination therapy to improve that? So one of the candidates, which has been hanging around in the, in the field for a long time, that is a CMET tyrosine kinase. CMET tyrosine kinase is known to be activated in liver cancer and many other cancer types. I will not be surprised that colangio uh, uh, carcinoma is the same. And there's an inhibitor being shown that to inhibit very well in animal model. But clinical trial, unfortunately, failed. And we don't know why. But now I'm going to share with you, we know why and we can overcome it. And that's shown here. So these are two clinical trial or FD, uh, uh, the uh, CMAT inhibitor. And when we did the animal experiment using, using the skin mice, which has no immune response, then tumor develop and both drug inhibit the tumor growth. Very clear, it's the same as in the literature. That's why they move into clinical trial. However, when you use the immunocompetent mice model, this is the tumor development and these two drug, it does not work. So this experiment tells us what? Tells us in the immunocompetent mice or human, we are all immunocompetent, that the immunity can compromise anti-tumor activity or CMAT inhibitor. Why that's the case? And I'm not gonna show the data. The paper was just published last month in this journal. Oh, sorry. Yeah, in this journal. So. Earlier, we have shown there's a molecule called GSK3 beta. This is a kinase, phosphorylated PTO1, degraded PTO1. But in this article, we discovered cement as a receptor tyrosine kinase, which is frequently activated human cancer, including liver cancer and many other cancer types. That this kinase phosphorylated GSK3 beta in a specific site after phosphorylation stabilizes this enzyme, and when this enzyme was stabilized, the next result is degraded PTO1. So I see met tyrosine kinase, downregulated PTO1. So does that sound familiar? It's very similar to metformin. 
metformin downregulated PD-1, so we combine with anti-CD4 and show the very nice combination effect. But here it's a CMAT downregulated PD-1. If CMAT downregulated PD-1 now, one can imagine if you use a CMAT inhibitor, which is the anti-cancer drug, which show in the animal the new mice that you suppress tumor, but although tumor cell growth was suppressed. But CMAT inhibitor at the same time downregulate PT1 make the cancer cell what? More sensitive to be killed by T cell. So the, the anti-tumor activity was compromised. If that were the case, can we use combination therapy, CMAT inhibitor plus anti-PD L1 because PD L1 was uh, 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 activated when you use CMAT inhibitor, and the result is very impressive. Here's our treatment strategy, and I don't want to go to all those details. Just look at the survival. Oh, just look at it. Tumor, tumor develop. Okay. Tumor develop. You use cement inhibitor, as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't work in the immunocompetent mice. Only work, only suppress in the skin mice which have no immune response. But use anti pd L1, it works a little bit, but when you combine them, it's a red color. Working better, survival curves here. You don't treat them, they die. Anti-PD-1 therapy in this particular cohort is about 30 plus percent, but when you combine the anti-CD4 and this CMAT inhibitor now, it's almost 50 percent. Keep in mind, the drug, both drugs has been, one of them has been approved for liver cancer, the other one has been tested in liver uh, uh, cancer, but clinical trial failed, the single agent. But if you combine with them, combine them together, this uh, immunocompromised, it's a uh, almost 70 to 80 percent, and we use multiple model results are similar. So this is another example that, uh, that cholangio carcinoma could be uh, follow this type of project to understand the mechanism and develop uh, mechanism driven uh, combination therapy. So now, the next thing is all those are model system, but next we would like to know, can you develop a therapy that have uh, Bystand effect. Bystand effect meaning, let's say, in this room, assuming we are all solid tumor, and assuming those who wear glasses, both of you, my friend, you wear glasses, you are PT1 positive. You use anti PT1 therapy, you kill them. But we have someone who do not wear glasses. Oh, my three Chinese uh, fellow from, from China, they don't wear glasses, but they don't sit next to someone with glasses. That's fine. So they, they are PT1 negative. Bystander effect meaning if I develop a drug target PT01, you wear glasses, I kill you. You don't wear glasses, you survive it, fine. But unfortunately, you are in a solid tumor. You are very close to each other. So when I selected to kill Milan and Yan Yun, wear glasses, they die. But because you are very close, uh, you die too. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's by definition bystander effect. So I'm going to share with you how we develop that. So here, remember earlier I mentioned that PTO one is heavy glycosylation is critical for function. So in collaboration with a small biotech company, that we actually try to develop monoclonal body against glycosylation PTO one I want to make a long story short. We have eventually, out of 3,000 clones, developed two different uh, kind of a very effective uh, 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 anti pto one antibody, and one of them can induce internalization. What I mean internalization means pto one is a cell receptor molecule. Anybody recognize that? Not only recognize that, they induce internalization. After induced internalization, what happens is the antibody will be degraded by lysosome, that's in the textbook. And then this internalization allows us to develop by standard effect therapy. So shown here. Here the antibody will develop. In order to build this antibody induce internalization. Therefore, then with this antibody, we coupling with a very toxic chemo, MM. Uh, monomethyl uh, aristatin E. This is a very toxic compound. But this very toxic compound, you chemically link to this antibody. Then after that, you treat the animal, and let's look at the survival. Here, it's a triple negative breast cancer model, which I used earlier. It doesn't work, they die, you don't treat them. If you treat them just by antibody alone, anti pd one and remember anti pd one therapy which just been approved by FDA to treat breast cancer just this, this, this year, or oh, last year, last year, okay? And so this, and then respond rate is about 20 to 30 percent. This animal study is close. Anybody alone is about 25 percent. But my friend, please look at this red color. This one is the antibody coupling with 
MMAE, very toxic compound. So there's one drug, this drug is antibody coupling with the chemical. And here is survival curve, almost 70%. And then we can see similar result in the other animal model. Anybody along, drug conjugated, and this colon cancer, anybody along, they die. Uh, the anybody along, uh, then, uh, any, then when you use the red color, is anybody drug conjugate. So this tells us, well, when you have anybody drug conjugate, the therapeutic efficacy is much stronger, and then we have done all those pharmacodynamic study in the animal. But what do they induce by stand effect? And bear with me now. This in vitro is in vivo. You take a tumor cell, triple negative breast cancer, 231 tumor cell, the yellow color. This cell is PTO and positive, wear glasses. Okay, wear glasses. So the drug target is PTO1 glasses, so we kill it. So I'm sorry, my friend Minan and Yen, they wear glasses, they will kill. But because they wear glasses. But now if we knock down PTO1, so they take away glasses like me, I take away. After they take away glasses, you treat the same drug. It's this black color. You don't kill them anymore. Right? Because you don't have a PDO one. Right? Everybody follow me? Then after that, now we mix them together. How about I use those two ladies? Uh, you and the one next to you, you do not wear glasses. You are PDO one negative. She wear glasses, PDO one positive. So she is like this yellow color being killed. But you are like this black color was not killed. But unfortunately, she next to each other in the same tumor. So when you mix them one by one, that's this red color. They kill too. Everybody follow me? That's so-called by standard. So originally, the PT1 negative cell was not killed. But because in the same tumor, it killed. And all four cell line tests in vitro, the same result. In vivo, result is the same. Why? Mechanism is following. Here is T cell, PT1. Here is tumor cell, which is the PT01. So we know T cell go to PT, uh, PT1, PT1 interaction. That we don't have to go through that. But what I just show you is following. We develop anti PT1 antibody, this black color, and this anti PT1 antibody hook up to a small molecule, red color, highly toxic compound. So this guy recognizes anti PT1 and induce internalization. And after internalization, go to, as I mentioned, this is the standard textbook that anybody will be degraded. And then by lysosome, then the small molecule, this small molecule, red color, highly toxic compound, will be released only in this tumor cell, which is PT1 positive, i.e., those who wear glasses. So they die. But because after this cell die, this small molecule released to the neighboring cell. The neighboring cell is PTO negative. And they still can kill. That's where the bystander comes from. Okay? So with that in mind, we have, you know, this one was reported by, again by Lee and Lim, and, and then um, we um, humanized this antibody, and we're hoping that this can be, go to clinical trial, try to, this doesn't have to be what disease. Any disease has a PTO one positive, it should be okay. So, May, then people may always ask, in that situation, how about normal cell? Here, I just want to show. We show that this dose is a very safe. Uh, 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 there's no toxicity. And then you can see uh, expression pattern here. Tumor cell express PTO1. Immune cell in the tumor microenvironment also express PTO1. But normal cell, no PTO1. Or immune cell in a normal tissue, no PTO1. So that's why it's a relative safe. Although the toxicity study we done only in mouse, but this had to be tested in human. So with that in mind, it's time for us to work together to make a cancer history. Of course, we want to focus on um, cholangial carcinoma. <laughs> and I'm, next time when you see me, please hug me. <laughs> I will work on cholangial carcinoma. So, so here it's a. Uh, Here's my lab, just took a slide at the time in my, uh, uh, right before I retire, and I'm going to duplicate this laboratory in Taiwan, Taichung, China Medical University. Thank you so much.
Thank you. Thank you, Professor Wang, very much. You bring us a lot of hope about the treatment in the cholangiac carcinoma. Next system. No. So, can you enjoy one question from sure, the floor? Sure, sure. Uh, I do whatever you ask me to do. You <laughs> ask me to sing, I'll sing a song. <laughs> Is there any one question, or a short question? I don't know what I'm so, Minji, I have one question. There has Go. been some ongoing work with immunotherapy in cholangiocarcinoma. The benefit is very modest. It's not like prostate. The anti-PD. Anti-PD-1. Anti yes, very moderate. In, in pancreas, I know it doesn't work, but in... Pancreas, a little better than pancreas. And then you say in the cholangial and carcinoma, it doesn't work, right? It, well, a study with pembrolizumab had like a 5% response rate. In Nevo, maybe a little bit more, but it's still pretty low, single digits. I, I, that's good. Because that in that situation, that I, I since you guys, you, the networker, you're gonna look him for all those uh, uh, two thousand patient, uh, those yeah. uh, uh, mutation, right? If one can identify those potential, because we have to learn uh, from other cancer types, there are so much data already available. Once the other mutation been identified, there may be a, a possibility we can develop this type of mechanism driven, so that right now it's five percent, but maybe by combined with another, another one, we can make it fifty percent. Uh, we, we can talk. I still go back to MT Anderson. Don't forget me. <laughs> <laughs> and you can speak me in English. You don't have to speak Chinese or Taiwanese. Okay, thank you. Thank you.